right, so, um, all right, so we have, uh, let's do the public hearing again. So it's like okay, so yeah. apparently we have some muting issues here. Mm -hmm. So let's, uh, like they didn't hear any of that. Didn't hear all right, okay. let's just back up to, we did the pledge. Okay, so pledge is done. All right, visitor citizen form. No one signed up to speak, right, Linda? Correct. Okay, so no one signed up to speak at the beginning here. All right, next up we have a public hearing for the uh, requested annexation of the area out in front of Lakewood Village. Um, so I'll open the public hearing. Linda, did anyone sign up to speak during the public hearing? No. No one requested to speak during the public hearing. So I have a motion to close the public hearing. I have a motion from Daryl to close the public hearing. I have a second from Eric. All those in favor? Aye, okay. <coughs> okay, very good. All right, next up, regular agenda, item one, consideration of variance for 424 Peninsula for a front-facing garage. This is on the curve. Uh, this is an irregularly shaped triangular sort of lot uh, with a narrow frontage, floodplain issues in the rear. Um, <clears throat> basically, this is the poster child for variance for a front-facing garage. You can't make one fit sideways. Um, so... Uh, looks good to me. Any only, <coughs> anybody have any questions? The only concern I have is they have that real tall garage door, but I don't know. I don't, I don't think it's a showstopper, but it's just one of those. I guess, do we know a little bit more what they were planning, what their intention is? Yeah. Uh, 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 travel trailer. He's got a travel Yeah, he's got a bigger, oh, okay. taller vehicle. He wants to put a travel trailer inside, not inside of his yeah. Okay, the door sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any any other questions? I make a motion to approve the variance on 424 Peninsula for the front facing garage. Uh, we have a front facing garage. Serena has got the motion, and Matt Bissonette has the second. All those in favor? All right, thank you very much. <clears throat> All right, next up, we have a discussion of concrete roads. Let me give everybody an update here on the roads. Uh, first off, we'll start with basically the, uh, the, the financial update. Uh, so what's been going on recently, as you all can tell, they've moved over to Cary Lane. So they've done a lot of work on Cary. That's ongoing. <clears throat> Uh, they're almost ready on uh, High Ridge. They've done a lot of work down there. We still have some inlet issues on High Ridge, uh, some underground pipe that we got to work out. We're working on some of those solutions. Um, <clears throat> so on the current uh, outlays here, you can see in the in the financials. So the construction costs remaining are about three million. What we have left in the construction run is two five. So we have a current gap right now, four hundred thirty eight thousand. That's the current funding gap that we have to come up with by next May. Now we have a large change order that's still outstanding. It's between fifty to hundred thousand dollar change order on the uh, on the dirt, the dirt work. And that is if you drive down High Ridge or if you drive down Melody, you'll see sections of the road. It looks like there's a miniature earthquake where the road is suddenly got like a hole in it. That was them going down and peeling back the layers to see how much asphalt there is there to work out this change order. How much dirt and how much milling is there going to be? So, um, the, they're not going to have to purchase dirt. That's the big, and that was $100,000 plus in dirt. Our, right and so now they're going to reuse our dirt, the, the, the mountain at the sewer plant. So that's the credit. But there's some additional dirt work involved there, so it's so we're, we're working on it. The, that's why we pay the engineers. And so it will be a significant change uh, to that going down. I, I think I anticipated it would be about 350 when we were all said and done. It's gone up recently in the last month or so. We've had to relocate a bunch of lines. We're still in the process of doing that. So one of the things that happens is the, the engineers designing the drainage, we have all those drop inlets on the corners, those big inlets. And the one across from you, Serena, is a six by six, a six foot by six foot drop inlet that's going in, in, in that area. Well, when they're positioning it, when we start digging, we find out that that's sitting on top of the, the, the sewer line. Well, it can't, it has to move. And on the other side of the street, the water line was in the way, the water main. So we had to drop the water main. So we've got a couple places where we're having to move water mains and sewer lines because the, the inlet 
goes, we can move it forward and backward a little bit, but we can't move it laterally because all the other pipes are tying in. So I'm carrying, there's four pipes tying in under the middle of the street to make that big junction box. So we're, we're having to move a lot of stuff. That's what's going on now is, is getting that out of the way. <clears throat> and there's no way they would know that in the design because we didn't give them, we didn't know. If you just look down the street, you don't know where our water lines are either. You can guess. You know what side of the street they're on. You don't know whether they're four feet from the edge of the pavement or six feet. You know, they didn't give us maps of those when they did it back in 96. So we don't know. We're guessing where they are based on the fire hydrants. But we don't know how far offset they are. So some of that is just guesswork. And we, we, we run into that problem down here on high ridge. And we just have to get in front of it. So that's some of the some of the work that we're working on. We found a mystery pipe at, at the corner of High Ridge and uh, High Ridge and uh, Woodcrest. That lot that's got the eight feet of fill dirt on it on the corner. So there's a pipe in the back that runs out to the street, but we raised the street almost five feet, which means that pipe would now be about. 10 feet underground where it is today, which won't work. And it blocks up all the water up the street. So it was illegally that they added all this fill dirt, so they basically dammed it up. So it'd be like on this side of town, a lot of water over here runs through the backyards. And then it hits the shoreline, and then the shoreline picks it up. Well, over there, it was running through the backyards, and then somebody added eight feet of fill dirt to their yard. Well, that kind of stops the end of that. So it couldn't make it the rest of the way. So we're having to, even though we didn't put it in, and there's no drainage easement there, if we plug that pipe, it'll flood the backyards of the people uphill. <clears throat> so we have to fix it. So we're going to fix it, we're going to put in a new pipe, and then we're going to lean the property. Because we're not paying for an illegal pipe. <clears throat> but So they said that they could, they could just raise one end of that a little bit, and they'd be okay. They're going to put in. Right so what we're going to do is we're going to put in some um, some CMP there. So we're going to put in CMP is corrugated metal pipe, basically like a culvert, but we're going to slope it at like a half a degree. It's going to barely slope. So it's going to stay where it is back next to the other lot. But it's going to stay in the back corner. Raise up. And it's, we're going to slope it, and they measured it. Apparently, if, we, if it's got a little fall, it can still hit the bottom of the drop inlet. So we're redesigning it now to hit the bottom of the inlet. You know the corner, the empty lot across from that? Yes, that's right next to the Mickey Mouse pool. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Right. <clears throat> um, so we're working that angle. Uh, they should get, that's going to be a change order that you're going to see. For us, so we're going to end up paying for it because Ed Bell's got to do it, and um, and then we're going to just lean the property on. We'll move ahead with that. We notify him ahead of time that this is about to happen, and we're notifying him eventually. <clears throat> right now, we don't know when it's going to happen. Um, <clears throat> but the problem is, there's no solution. I mean, there is no if you if you try to like dig it out and leave it as a trench, it's below ground. Yeah, the only other idea was to level that whole the guy next to him, his backyard. You have to raise all the backyards all the way up the hill. Yeah. So, um, or you remove the fill that was put on the lot, but then... Yeah, there's, like, no, there's no good answer. All right. Now, the thing that helps us is that before we did the road, a lot more water came through there. But now that we've done Meadow Lake... We've designed the bar ditches over there. We've designed the road. There's actually less water now going that way. Because now it's being captured correctly on Meadow Lake. So it's not as bad a problem as it's been historically. But still, if we plug it, we can't, we can't plug it. That's not an option. We have to get that water out of the backyard. Well, that would be a lake there. If we had so it's just one of these things where we're stuck between a rock and a hard place. Um, right now, we're a little bit hung up on Cary Lane. Because we need to move the transformer at the corner of Cary and Melody. There's a transformer there. <clears throat> Apparently, God only knows why, the power line diagonals across Cary Lane and heads toward your side yard. It doesn't go just down the street on both sides where the transformers are. 
a diagonal goes in a cross heading towards your driveway, sir. <clears throat> Which means it hits in conflict with every one of the pipes that are underground. So the coastal line's got to go. It's got to be moved. Um, <clears throat> and they're quoting us like bump lags that we'll push in and we'll be there in about a month. Which is a problem. <clears throat> um, so that intersection carrying Melody right now is hung. So they're not going to put any of the pipe in until they put all of the pipe in. They confirmed that with me. Um, so, uh, so that's kind of what we're waiting on there, is to get that done. Otherwise, they're rolling up and they're going to do. You know, they're they're trying to get they're trying to get high rates to concrete down by Thanksgiving. It looks like that's not going to happen. They're not. They're only going to work two days Thanksgiving week. And they, they don't think we're going to get any concrete down right now. Just for you guys, this is a copy. Uh, it's a little hard to read, but this is what we get in our meetings. This is the two-week look ahead. So this is their proposed schedule for the next two weeks. Um, so part of that was that they were calling in the two-week look ahead that they would end up actually trying to get carry, get some concrete on it, and that's not going to happen. So the goal now, kind of in the, unofficially, is to get concrete on carry by the end of the year and to get uh, high-ridge concrete on it um, Thanksgiving, right after Thanksgiving. Here's the coaster planning. It affects the pipe work. Which affects, they can do the paving, they just have to leave out sections. Yeah, they, yeah, so they've they got to leave out the intersection. So down there at Metal Lake and High Ridge, right? They can do all the concrete on High Ridge and then pack up, leave, come back. The other issue we're working, we've got to expedite now, is the lift station on High Ridge. Now that the, now that the road's been raised to four, four and a half feet, the dirt is actually falling on top of the lift. We buried the lift station. You can't even lift the lid, it's, under, it's underground. So we've got to, they dug that back out today, so we're expediting a, uh, a concrete ring to be put on that. So we may go to Ed Bell to see if we can get them to get it. So again, there might be a few things that we're trying to acquire from them. Um, but uh, other than that, I mean, the, the road is, uh, is progressing. I think everybody knows that we're back on Stowe again. Stowe is corrective action. <clears throat> Did they get that done? I believe they're done now. Um, they still have, they still have a little bit more to fill in down on the uh, Stowe Court near there. The drainage uh, there on the other side, the non lake side, they did they get that done? Yes, yeah, so they were putting sod back on it. Yeah, so they're watering that. Um, so everybody knows kind of the way it works. It's supposed to work is when they think they're finished with the street, then. We do a walkthrough and come up with a punch list, a preliminary punch list, which is these are all the things that need to be fixed. And then they fix it. <clears throat> Only after it's fixed are they allowed to like, okay, we're good with this for now. At the end of the project, we come back again and start over and do every street with a final punch list. Because at the end, you know, that input that looks good now might be leaning. Right. right. We don't know. It. It's something like crack between now and then. But we haven't even done that punch list walk for Stowe. So we haven't even told them what needs to be fixed. This is just the obvious. You know, so people have started putting their sprinklers back. People are starting to put things back out there. Yeah, and it's in your mayor's letter. I will, okay. yeah. So I don't think a lot of people understand that. Yes, yeah, so it's very important that until that gets walked, until we do the punch list, you really just stay out of there. Um, and it's funny, people seem to think they have to water the sod. Like, you know, they have to get out there quickly and sprinkle and water and put the irrigation back to water the sod. That's the water trucks you see going up and down the street. They have to water, not you guys. So, you know, but we'll sell you water. I don't care. Um, uh, we just don't want to have to destroy any more sprinklers. So. But, uh, but that is... Um, that's what's going on with that. Um, so I think that's it. Is there any, any questions about that stuff? Um, everybody's seen, if you've been to the sewer plant, we're now wrapping to the left. So we're wrapping around that far side there. 
um, which is exciting. We're going around the other side now, so I think we're going to be able to get it fully, get, fully uh, enclosed. There's uh, still some dirt to come. We still have to do Melanie and most of Carrie, and so there's a lot of dirt still to come. Um, okay, I think that's. Any, Clint, you got any questions on the road? I know you've been coming to meetings. Good. I'm good. Okay. All right. Um, okay. <clears throat> All right. So that's it on the uh, on concrete roads. <clears throat> All right. Next up is a um, discussion of the traffic warrant study. So I know uh, that uh, Eric Hancock is asked to speak about this. So let me just real quick uh, before I turn it over to Eric. So what the traffic study is, everybody understands what a traffic warrant is. <clears throat> the, um, in order to put up a stoplight, the Texas local government code, actually it's the transportation code, says as a city we are allowed to put up stop signs and we are authorized to put up stoplights. We can do that. Provided that we follow the manual on uniform traffic control devices. There's a manual which lays out stop signs are red, you can't have a purple yield sign, shapes, sizes, thoughts, everything is laid out in the manual. And in the manual, the traffic warrants, there's like nine criteria that you need to meet to legally put in a stoplight. So what the manual says is, before city council can even vote to put in a stoplight and, and make an ordinance there, you know, that you can't run the red light, you have to get a licensed traffic engineer to perform a traffic study to verify with his stamp that you meet one of the nine criteria. So you, this is step 1A. You don't even bother costing out the light. If you don't clear this hurdle, it's over. Game, set, match. Okay, so this traffic study that they, that we did is you now you have it back. You see the recommendation, um, which is as we would expect. Um, the document itself is going to change. There's some typos in the document, but I didn't get a chance to go back and forth to Todd. So we're going to clean it up a little bit. There's some typos in there, you know, and there's a couple of the uh, of the diagrams aren't exactly correct. But um, but anyway, that's kind of what this is. So. Uh, what we'll do is uh, we'll, we'll let we'll let Eric speak, and then we'll go back, and then we'll address any questions that that you guys might have. Okay. So um, so what we have is Eric Hancock is asked to speak on this agenda item. I think uh, Eric uh, was given the uh, the protocol. Linda, I think, sent it to them um, regarding this uh, <clears throat> this uh, uh, open meetings thing. So Eric. Uh, you got. Uh, you have three minutes to uh, uh, speak, Linda. If you uh, unmute him. Uh, oh, is he good to go? Okay, uh, Eric, you're you're up. Okay, man. Uh, good evening. This is Eric Hancock, eight two four nine Tremont Place, Frisco, Texas, seven five zero three four. So I am speaking on the traffic warrant study. Uh, I am one-third owner of 20 acres at the front of Lakewood Village. Me, my brother, Lane Hancock, and Steve Dumain, we've owned it for about 15 years. And the entrance uh, to Lakewood Village is our one safe entrance, our only entrance that comes in uh, off of El Dorado onto our property. Our main issue has to do with this um, traffic warrant recommends uh, tearing out the current uh, entrance to Lakewood Village. Uh, this is the first time that Lakewood Village has publicly brought up tearing out uh, the entrance uh, to Lakewood Village. Uh, and I've watched the council meeting since uh, 2016 that Joni, uh, resident Joni Lehan, has been diligently videoing. Uh, I think I've seen everyone that's done there. So uh, when I noticed on the agenda packet that, uh, that you had this warrant and I read that they recommended tearing it out. I called Secretary Linda Asbell yesterday. I asked her if that was the plan. She said, obviously, you know, she doesn't uh, uh, have a vote, and she didn't want to, you know, speculate on that. But she did say, quote, you will have access to your property. I believe that's the uh, pretty much the exact quote. And I took that to her as referring 
that I would have to um, access my property with the most recent uh, thoroughfare plan. And um, so it, that shows us having to come in through the new town entrance, circle back to our property via 1,000 feet of town roads uh, and county roads, um, three or 400 feet of new driveway to get to the pad side at the front of town that we currently don't have to do with our easement. Um, so then Secretary Asbell told me maybe you should have come to one of those meetings for the thoroughfare plan. And I told her I was well aware of the thoroughfare plan um, and that said nothing about taking out the front entrance. Uh, she thought it showed X's taking out the entrance um, on the plan and I told her uh, it just showed X's uh, and uh, abandoning Lake Crest well before our entrance easement uh, uh, at the current town entrance. Uh, and we're fine with that, uh, you know, abandoning Lake Crest. Uh, and I sent that to the council last night. But now I see a study, this study, that wants to take away the entrance. And I need to strongly state to the council that we would see this as tremendously de devaluing our property and an illegal taking by the town. A uh, violation of our constitutional rights as property owners. Further, further this study appears to accept non-factual assertions to meet a desired outcome. Uh, a couple of the assertions I have sent to the council already, the distances that Kimberly Horn traffic study uh, uh, show for a deceleration uh, zone currently at Lakewood Village, they say 60 feet. Denton Cat aerial with measuring tool shows 96 feet with a conservative measurement. And I sent that aerial with their measuring tool. Another one, Kimberly, this Kimberly Horn study shows that there's only about 200 feet to extend a new wider turn lane where the current entrance is. And I sent you an aerial from Denton CAD with the measuring tool showing 290 plus feet. They're off by 100 feet. That's a big deal. So if the town wants a new entrance and a signal light to be moved further up, let us let us keep our entrance. Uh, don't violate our rights with that. And uh, if you do let us keep our entrance and you want to, uh, you know, you can use a barrier and let us put up a, maybe a, um, uh, you know, a, a gate, electronic gate that we open, and you can use signage saying go to the signal lights, enter Lakewood Village, uh, but don't take away our constitutional rights, and I thank you for your time. That is all. Okay, all right. Thanks, Eric. Appreciate it. Uh, okay. So, um, all right, but let me, uh, let me point out a couple things, then we can ask some questions. You guys, I don't know whether you remember, you might, so back in July or so of 2019, we had the engineers look at three different locations for the proposed entrance, one to the east, one to the west, and the existing current entrance, and their recommendation was that we move it to the proposed location. We then had four public hearings. We adopted the thoroughfare plan after several public hearings with it in its location what is shown here. <clears throat> that was in November of 2019. After public hearings, we adopted the thoroughfare plan, which show the location where the traffic warrant is. So we've had the, this entrance in this same spot for almost a year and a half. We have been putting it there on diagrams. We adopted the thoroughfare plan. We adopted the recommendation from the engineers. So <clears throat> this is not something which happened yesterday. This has been sitting here for over a year. Uh, it's just taken us a year to get land plan, to get that development square enough so that we could move ahead with the, with the plan. So, um, so questions about the traffic one. Any questions? There's obviously different different criteria for the traffic one. Um, it's based on traffic flows and that kind of stuff. But after reading it, I mean, I, I kind of, there's some concern. I mean, it's the first draft. I mean, there's some wording in there that I think is misleading that will, you know, I'll get red line to get to you so we can get it back to the engineer and then yeah. and, and get it. I mean, yeah. I mean, the, 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 okay, the, the, the conclusion of the engineers that we warrant, so we not only warrant a traffic signal, we also warrant it's an individual right turn lane turning into the city <laughs> off of Del Dorado. So they've made the determination that we don't want to, you know, accordion up Del Dorado by people turning right into the village. Um, 
there is something, uh, like in one of the charts, it shows, you know, that Lake Crest is to be abandoned. Well, that's true. Lake Crest is going to be abandoned, but there's going to be an alternate road to Lake Crest. Okay, so everybody's property is going to have exactly the same access. will have access, but it will be in a different road. It's not going to be Lake Crest. It's going to be a different road. So, for instance, the area to the east, west, area to the west <clears throat> is going to have a different road that land plan is going to put in. Lake Crest is gone. All of Lake Crest is going to go away. It's going to be a new road that's going to go in place of Lake Crest. Yeah. The, the so. portion of Lake Crest that is un, undeveloped, right? So, I mean, there's, yeah, so, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. there's a lot of compromises here, right? right. So, the folks, in, the folks that live in the shores are going to have a speedier access. And some of the folks like Daryl and myself that are on Lake Crest, we have a little bit longer commute because we'll have to meander through town a little bit more. So, I mean, it's, you know, the benefit of getting uh, a light, and we have a, we have an opportunity here to partner with the de developer to achieve that. So, that's, um, and, you know, the warrant, I, I like what Kimberly Horn did. Is they looked at alternatives of moving the entrance further to the west to get off the curve because that is where the danger is. Um, unfortunately, that land to the west is not really up for development, so we're kind of, we'd miss an opportunity here to go after a light, so. Yeah, I think, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I, I think of our options, I think this is a really unique opportunity here to, to, get, a, to get a light, and, and you know, but more, more importantly, I, we just need to get with Kimberly Horn, make sure we get the language cleaned up, there's, like I said, there's now, leading dialogue in there. And, so what you do <laughs> with the traffic warrant, once you get, like, what we have here, is you basically take it and you stick it in the file. You don't send it to anybody. You don't. We don't need anyone's permission to put in a traffic signal. We can put in anyone we want. All we need is that. Let's just say. Let's say that we. Um, and similarly, let's say we drop the speed limit to 15 miles an hour in Lakewood Village. We just pass an ordinance. We're going to make it 15 miles an hour. Sounds good. Except you can't do that. <laughs> we can't do that. We can only drop it to 25. If we go anything else, there has to be a traffic study. If we did it at 15 and somebody got a ticket, the first thing they could say is, where's your traffic study? Well, without that traffic study, that means the ordinance is void. It means we did not have the authority to do that. Our authority is only after a traffic study. So that's kind of how these things play, is that if we put in a stoplight, I mean, you know, you just take that warrant. That way, if there's ever a question, hey, you know, I had an accident there, the accident was caused by your traffic signal, then we just pull out the warrant and show, no, we followed all the steps. Kimberly Horn is the one that signed the paper. Okay, so it's a necessary step that we have to go through, and it's, it's, I'm glad that we got through this step, yeah. and that's important. Uh, yeah, we need to be ready to put that light in, so it's very important that it end up there. And land plan knows now. They know about the light, or they know about the, 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 the warrant. Okay, next up is consideration of a municipal services agreement with LEISD. Um, Linda, you want, you want to talk about this? Um, I, I sent that over to LEISD. They have reviewed it. Um, their representative in the thing to the school board has reviewed it, and their um, attorney has reviewed it. They don't have any um, issues. They have some language changes just on the description of the property. But they were good, and this is the very standard stuff that's required in all annexations. It's, it's pretty boilerplate. Almost every annexation is that way. It's just describing the services that we're going to provide to that property once they're in Most, uh, in the old days, most annexations, so a couple years ago, were, were um, involuntary. You wake up in the morning, hi there, you're now in our city, we annexed you to get the taxes. <laughs> So in order for it to be fair, they had passed laws that said, okay, if you annex somebody, you have to give them a plan as to how you're going to get them water, sewer, and everything else, fair is fair. And if you don't do it within a certain time frame, like 24 months or something, then you've got to de-annex them. Because they're paying taxes and you're giving them nothing. So you have to have a service plan. So whenever you do an annexation, you got to put in paper, this is how we're going to provide you services, and this is what we're going to give you. So it's crystal clear what you're doing. Now with us, the school district is going to vote on the annexation as part of the big developer agreement, annexation, on Monday. Well, if they vote on Monday to do that, then we have to have them approve a service agreement. Well, 
they don't meet again for, you know what I'm saying? So we're just doing all in one. Here, here's the service agreement. Approve this, this put it all together in one, so we get the clock ticking. There's like a 51-day, 45-day, you know, publish this, wait three days, dance around in a circle, hold your nose. There's things you got to do for 45 days before you can annex. So we got to get these things done. So we got to get the clock going. One way you get the clock going is you get the agreement, this stuff signed. So that's what this is. This is a boilerplate. We have to do it. Otherwise, we got to wait for our meeting and then their meeting. And then, you know what I mean? We're, we're waiting. Um, so that's all this is. Okay. It's a, it's a necessary step. Okay? So are you going to say something? <laughs> Consideration item. So, do you have any questions about it? Um, it just says we're going to provide them with the same stuff we get: water, sewer, garbage, usual stuff. So, this is fire EMS. Fire EMS so, if you consider it, I, I need to okay, make a motion to approve the municipal services agreement with LEISD. Okay, there's a motion to uh, approve the uh, agreement. Eric's got the second. Thank you, sir. All those in favor? Thank you. All right, very good. Yeah, that's just a necessary thing to keep it uh, keep it moving forward. All right, consideration of contract for water wastewater operations. So, as you guys know, uh, Patterson's contract expires at the end of the month, so they're out. Uh, we're going to be using uh, someone else instead. We did a lot of research, talked to some people, and huh? And they worked it to the end of their contract. They have to work to the end of the contract, which is November. That's the 90-day notice. And they've been doing what they They've been showing up. The sewer plant is in horrible shape, but they're, they've been showing up, but not doing anything. Um, the, uh, not doing much. Let's put it that way. Um, so what we're going to do is, so what we're going to do is this. This is the, the best solution. I have got an, an agreement with, um, a licensed operator, so Brent uh, Piggott, who's a former Patterson person, he is going to um, come online for us. But what we're going to do is uh, we're going to hire him as an employee. So what that means is Lakewood Village will be the operator. Just like any other city, we're not going to outsource it. It's inside the city, so we're doing it. He's working as a part-time employee to do it. The advantage of that for us is that means he doesn't have to have an, an operating company, and he doesn't have to pay for insurance because he's covered under our TML insurance. So right now we're going to pay Patterson somewhere in the neighborhood of forty-five thousand to do this. Anyway. And I have got Brent. So Brent's agreed that 